Hello everyone, in tonight's video I'm going to tie this fly and particularly I'm going to explain how to tie marshmallow style of uh, bodies. Uh, originator of this style is Mr. Ken Shimazaki. He's a designer for Kienko hooks and he's also a designer of many many flies. Uh, probably not so known in West but in Japan he's quite a famous person. Well when it comes to fly fishing and fly tying. Uh, this fly was invented, well this style was invented some 20 or a little bit more years ago and particularly it was invented to imitate uh, pupas with quite thick body and quite that are quite large. So this was the primary reason to, Im to invent this kind of a fly. Uh, obviously it can imitate terrestrials and uh, for the terrestri terrestrial, I made something that resembles some kind of a bug, spider, whatever. It's ugly, but I'm quite sure it's going to catch some fish. Then, something that will resemble maybe a stonefly. I can add some markings on the body, but I don't think it's super necessary right now. Uh, this would be some stonefly, large stonefly. Uh, again, a bug but in this different color obviously you can play with colors and you can use permanent marker to to mark everything here and obviously obviously high vis is something that's useful this material is polypropylene and I'll go about it a little bit more when I'm going when I'm going to explain what materials I'm using uh, so this is polypropylene it has those knots that you can see you can use Zelon, Antron, Fibers. Uh, I did a little bit of homework on this fly, about advantages of this fly, and what I found, uh, I cannot say I, I tried it, so what I found is that, let's me just put the fly in the vise. So, okay, we're going to make this fly, so it's good to be here. It's easy to make large bodies. It's quite obvious that it is easy. You will see very soon. Uh, it's light. It is perfectly light, it won't affect your casting and I would add it when you cast it to a shy fish it won't spook it as easily as for example foam fly because it won't splash. Uh, people on the internet said that it is soft and uh, natural like and it will move in current. I doubt, I mean fly as itself is going to move more easily than the heavier fly which will anchor itself but this one will sit a little bit lower in the current and nothing will move it like this so that I doubt um, and it's soft again and it doesn't affect hooking, hook up right so without any further ado let's get, get into materials and then into tying uh, when it comes to materials and tools I'm going to use for body marshmallow fiber which is basically polypropylene but just very 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 fine one and uh, I, I this is my first time to use it and this is definitely the finest one I've used in my life and uh, as any propylene it's lighter than water and it will float nicely uh, for the body that's it. For the thorax, I'm going to use peacock dubbing mixed with uh, some CDC and that's it. Thorax and legs are done. Uh, to prepare body like this, uh, I will need a length of tippet, 4x in this case, and that's it. Uh, now after this, let me just show you how I make those bodies. So for the purpose of this fly, I'm going to use green. I'm using three strands. As you can see, three strands, and each strand has some knots in it. Any propylene does ha does have this. Uh, I know that people in my country, some of my friends, they source polypropylene in different colors and different thickness, like diameters. They uh, source it from those people who are making carpets by the m measure. Like you give the measures, they cut it, and then those edges they have to sew 
with exactly polypropylene. So if you have an opportunity to do so, just try to go and buy from these people polypropylene because it's much cheaper than branded one. There is a manual. When you buy this, there is a manual. So you should take a certain num number of uh, fibers. It says use four to eight strands of fibers and fold double and then cut. So I'm using less because I don't think I need that many. So I'm using three strands and they say fold double, meaning this. It's quite straightforward. And it's not so straightforward when the camera is in, in, in front of me. So. Okay. I cut this part and now everything is, as you can see, shorter. Now I need uh, a little bit of tippet. Now for the tippet, uh, you need to make a loop. So I'll just put polypropylene aside. So for that one, I'll make a loop around my left finger like so. And then with this shorter tag, I want to loop it again like so. Create a small loop over here. Yeah. And then by holding all these three lines now, I'll take this short tag and twist it around everything here. Oops. And then again, hold it here. And just there is one loop over here. Put it there, tighten everything, and you have loop that's sliding and that's it now all that's left is put this fold polypropylene yarn then I'll just check if everything is more or less equal I mean more or less it is and then I'll just pull on this tag I'll help me with, with my nail to set the knot over here okay and I'm left with this like a broom now my velcro comes very handy and I'll just comb this as nicely as I can I didn't comb uh, polypropylene prior to cutting it because when you have to comb through all the length of those fibers it's very likely that you're that you're going to break many of them and if you come very short one then you have just one knot to come out so it's much easier to do so so I'll just go a couple of times like this then I rotate a couple of times like this rotate and then you'll see it become it becomes to get a shape and this is the shape we are looking for. Quite nice. Uh, and then, again, very soft. Now let's get into a tighter view and see how to tie this fly. I feel, sorts, I'm doing a blasphemy here. I'm not using Tiemco hook, even though I have to say that Tiemco is among my favorite brands when it comes to hooks. I'm going to use Nano Silk by Semperfly 12 odd, and I'm going to start make a foundation, rather short one. So let me just give you my logic over here. But before that, I just need to give a little bit of super glue here to prevent materials from spinning around the hook because I'm going to cinch on this material very very hard so this is going to be first round of super glue I'll add a little bit more later okay this should be it now plan for this fly is from here sort of here I'm going to make a head and from here up until here it's thorax and legs 
that's it. From here to here, more or less, I'm going to make body. So let me just show you something again. This body is more or less as long as the hook. That's my idea behind it. But because I'm tying it in a little bit forward, it's going to extend half the hook length behind. So what I do here, I have prepared this body. So this is one hook length. When I tie it in here, it's going to extend less than one hook length behind. So first I'm going to counter spin the bobbin to let the thread jump into my hands and then up, up, up to prevent it from rotating around the hook but the whole thing is very slippery I'm using GSP, I'm using those nylon thread, uh, nylon material here I mean polypropylene I guess it's some kind of a nylon someone please correct me if it's necessary so I'm going to spin this thread to cord it to let it cinch down into material more just control this a little bit you can see that it's going to move around the hook if I don't tie it in properly so I'm just going in touching touching turns towards the hook eye from time to time I'll just do a couple of wraps because these wraps are going to make a loop okay and prevent everything from spinning I'm trying to cinch everything as hard as I can okay let me check I want to leave one I want to leave uh, leave here just enough room for the head that would be it yes okay just We'll finish out just in case. Okay. At this point, I'll add a little bit of more super glue, even though this is pretty solid. But I want to be uh, confident in my fly. So, as you can see, it's like very minimum, minimal amount of super glue over here let it soak okay now for the high-vis part I'm going to use this power post wing I use it usually for parachute flies but it's perfectly good for high-vis high wings and then up up, up. After a couple of wraps, cinch on your bobbin and then just catch it here. Try to make as little gap, uh, bump over here as possible, but it's not super important to, to make it without bump, bump, to be honest. Because this is going to be quite rough fly. Okay, as you can see it's there. Stays on the hook. Okay. Now I need CDC. For this purpose I'm going to use foam with a slit inside. I will use some dubbing. Not too much, just a little, like so. And I'm going to place dubbing on the CDC. So I'll make those barbs perpendicular to the rachis and then just Put dubbing like so. Then with my dubbing needle, I'm gonna push CDC in this slot over here. Clip it. And snip it. And this sounds like a verse from a poem. Clip it, snip it. This is the leftover, which is not much. Shorter ones I like to be behind, longer barbs I like to be in front. 
I'm going to make a dubbing loop. Okay, just okay. This is it. And in front. Dubbing twister, heavy one. Now because I'm using dubbing twister and GSP thread, I can allow myself to catch those barbs a little bit more shallow. And then I'll spin this very very hard. With normal threads, I don't catch this very shallow because it, it won't get these barbs as strong as GSP will because on, on GSP you can definitely put some serious tension. Now let's go. What I will do here, I'll go just one rep to over everything and then I'll just go one or two reps behind to lift this body up and pull everything towards the eye and as you can see it's lifted up I want hook to sit lower in the water and make uh, more balance to this fly so it's always going to land properly I will do another thing to make sure that the fly will land properly and I will talk about that later as I finish the fly now, one of the reasons why I didn't cut this, if anyone is wondering, is because I can hold on to it and I can wrap everything. So it's good to have something to grab onto here. And now I'll just make one, two wraps with this dubbing loop thread around here. And because it's super heavy, I don't have to worry I can leave everything as you can see now I'll spin my bobbin holder around this thread to secure it a couple of times and then you can just pull it back and lock everything down no that's that's it I'll just color the thread right now because I don't want white thread and nano silk is well it's okay with, with getting the color on it now uh, recently I've been experimenting with tool or no tool for the whip finish and this time I'll, I'll use the tool and I'll try to go with the thread under to lock everything together over here so by this time this thread is flattened, yes. And then let me see. One, two, three. Oops, I dropped it. Let me try again. I dropped the knot, so it's not good. Uh, uh, uh. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, five one more to the front then it's then to the back and it seems that I'm comfortable with both okay now let me explain what I was want, what I wanted to say uh, to balance the fly I have heavy wire hook and it's sitting deeper as you can see like a ship ships they have uh, I'm not sure how it's is it keel or something they have keel under them to keep them balanced in those waves so hook is doing the same here or any fly hook is actually balancing our fly so if those materials are heavier than our hook or they don't need to be heavier, heavier they, they just have to be tall enough they will just put your fly on the side that happens a lot with foam flies when people are putting too many layers and using too a uh, light hook for the job because they want like dry fly, light hook, not necessary. Uh, originator of this fly, I watched one of these, he, you know, one of his videos. He's using TMCO uh, 113 
BLH, which is I think H is for heavy. And as you can see here, it's nymph hook. It's amazing hook. Now, one more way how to balance the fly is pull everything away from the hook so you don't grab it with Velcro and mess it up. Just make this to the side, make those legs to the sides. And okay. And you can do the same on the top with being more careful. So just make it, make those legs go to the side. I think it looks cool. You don't need to see this CDC. Fish needs to see it and it needs to move in front of the fish and make it bite. Now I'm spinning this for the very maybe obvious or not reason because when I oops when I spin it it's easier for me to cut it but because when you spin it you make it shorter when you release it, it's going to be longer so take care of that take that into consideration now this is it same I'm going to do here without spinning though I'm going to make that elk hair caddis like hat Okay, sharp scissors are very important in this matter. As you can see, I left quite a big head. I mean, I can shorten it a little bit more, but I like it this way. Gives like a third, se a second segment here. So we have body, thorax, and the large front segment, which some terrestri terrestrials do have. Uh, so guys, thank you very much for watching. If you try this fly, please say it in comments, I would like to see, hear someone else's opinion about this. Always comments are welcomed, any suggestions, thank you very much for your time and see you next time.